In Vitro Fertilization by Sam and Adele. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Today I'll be talking about IVF. IVF stands for In Vitro Fertilization. It is a process of fertilizing eggs with sperm outside of the human body. Once the eggs are fertilized, the resulting embryos are placed inside the woman in hope that a successful pregnancy will follow. It is used to treat fertility, genetic problems and assist with conception of a child. Most women get IVF done when they're not able to have a baby due to genetic problems but still want to have a child. IVF involves a complex set of procedures that take place over several weeks. The procedures included in these weeks are stimulating the ovaries, collecting the eggs, fertilisation and embryo transfer. In 1977, the world's first baby was conceived by IVF. Where is the dummy? I am familiar with it. I know some people that have thought about using IVF, and I think it's a really amazing discovery that they've been able to, you know, use it and being able to allow infertile couples to have children, which I think is a wonderful thing. What are your views on IVF? Um, I think it's something that should be safe, legal, and rare in that I don't think it should be something that's done all the time. I think it's just in those rare circumstances of couples that have, you know, that are infertile, that want to have children. I think if it's judged on that basis, yeah, I'm absolutely for it. I just get a little bit worried as to where we're going if we regularly do it like that. It might become, you know, a means for couples to just say, let's choose the sex of our baby, let's choose the hair colour of our baby, and it could go down that pathway if we don't control it. And I think we've got to be careful not to play God, we've got to be careful not to, you know, choose what we have in our kids. I think random life is really important in that process. So do you think it makes a difference for um, a woman? That I think obviously that's an option if you know if it's a same-sex couple that really is the only option um, for that pro for them to have children. So I don't think it does make much of a difference. I just think that's probably more opening up the same-sex marriage debate, and that's sort of a separate debate to the IVF debate. So do you believe it makes a difference? Um, yeah, absolutely. As, as I said, I know some people. Um, I know some friends that work at the school um, that are unable for certain reasons to be able to have children in their relationship and so I think that that ability to be able to have children is so important. I think you know a lot of people the reason they get married is to start a family and I think that's a wonderful thing and the fact that sometimes you know their bodies don't allow for that to occur. I think IVF really opens up the realm of possibilities. But I think if it's as simple as them having a child done, you know, it might be done in a science lab, but as long as it's done in a similar way to how normal humans reproduce, being random, like those sorts of things, I think that's the best way of doing it. I'm just against the whole being able to choose certain traits that you want in a child. Do you think there's a difference um, I've always thought that children are best raised where they've got two parents. Uh, that's always been my position. I can understand why some women choose to do that, and that's because of the body clock. And I guess as a young male, I find that I can't sympathise with that in that it's not something I can comment on because I've never been in that position. But from a distance, I sort of can understand why women do that, but at the same time I tend to think that children are best raised where there's two parents. And do you think it makes a difference if the men and the women both have cancer? Um, I guess because cancer can limit their ability to reproduce, so it sort of puts them back in that situation of, okay, they're having, they want to have children, they're unable to have children. And so IVF allows them to possibly have children. So it's sort of the same answer, I guess, if they've got cancer or if they've got other reasons for not being able to reproduce, they sort of have the same position on that. Do you think IVF should be governed um, by the government or the parents who can't have children? I think so. I think it's just, um, and, and it'd have to be judged on a case by case basis. So often with those sort of things, they say they're means tested. 
Um, so that what is the incentive of that woman having that child? Um, because if you start to allow government funding for these things, then suddenly you could have cases of people abusing that and actually getting funding when it's not really something that's necessary. They might have three kids, so should they get funding for a fourth kid as opposed to someone who has no children? Those sort of, um, it opens up a can of worms in that way. Um, so I can understand why it needs to be careful, it needs to be rare in that way. And if you were put in that position, would you choose to um, go through IVF? Absolutely. As someone who wants to have children one day, um, you know, as someone as far as I know that is fertile, um, I'd want to be able to have children one day. And so if I found out I wasn't able to have children, I'd do everything I can to be able to have children. Um, and I know people in that situation that are willing to pay thousands and thousands of dollars because that's so important to them as people to be able to reproduce and start a family. Are we talking about facts and statistics of IVF in Australia? In Australia, infertility treatment such as IVF is generously subsidised by the government via Medicare. Therefore, IVF is more accessible, cheaper and safer in Australia than in any other country. Therefore, here are a few facts about IVF in Australia. There are about 75 IVF clinics around Australia. In 2007, more than 52,000 IVF treatment cycles were performed at these, clinic, at these clinics. About 10,000 IVF babies were born in 2007. About 600 of these 10,000 babies were born as a result of sperm, egg or embryo donation. About 3% of all babies born in Australia are IVF babies. IVF treatment is subsidised by Medicare and, and the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme. This is IVF, facts and statistics around the world. Okay, in 1996, a British organisation known as the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority, <laughs> um, also known as HFEA, estimated that a total of 52,000 frozen embryos existed in the UK. Um, in 2000, there were a total of 71,176 frozen embryos that existed in Australia and New Zealand. So I'll be talking about the supporting and opposing arguments in relation to religious views. Technologies of assisted reproduction, such as in vitro fertilisation, have been controversial on religious grounds since their, since their inception. But, but nonetheless, with Islam, Judaism, Hinduism and most forms of Christianity, adjustments have been made to facilitate the fertility of their adherents. These are some world views on IVF. Government agencies in China passed the ban on IVF in 2003, but only for unmarried women or a couple carrying certain infectious diseases who warned children. Some, some Muslim nations generally allow IVF between married couple, but only with the use of their own sperm and egg cells. None can be donated from outer sources or individuals. Iran has a more complex view on this topic as there is a ban in the sperm donation but the donation of fertilised and unfertilised eggs is allowed. These are some ethical issues on IVF. There are several ethical and moral issues surrounding the embryo freezing process. These include the following. Fate of the stored embryos of the death of couple orphaned embryos. Ownership of the embryos if the couple divorce safety of embryo freezing, concern that the length of time embryos have been kept in storage might have a detrimental effect on the outcome of frozen embryo transfer and possible increase in fetal abnormalities. IVF includes subjectivism as it is made legal so that people can make a decision based on their emotional connection and beliefs. IVF also uses situation ethics as people make their decisions on whether to use IVF each individually and uniquely. Not everyone's situation is the same. The outcome is always love as well. Bruce, by faith Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. <laughs> Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, 
A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Thanks for watching.